Once I was finished fabricating and modifying everything, I sent all the brackets and steel work out to be powder coated. I chose the black crinkle finish like you would find on basically any Smitty built product or anything like that that you would purchase. It gives it a great durable finish and something that should hold up for years and years to come. It looks fantastic. I sprayed the inside of the crossbars with automotive undercoating. Just look at that finish. Over the next several pictures, we're going to take a look at the lid that I fabricated for this trailer. Now, I wanted something that would keep eh, the vast majority of water out and I want to keep honest people honest. So I wanted a lightweight lid that I could manage myself and uh, something that was durable enough that it wouldn't buckle as I took it on and off or if I decided to put something on top of it that it would hold it. The pallet that you're seeing there on top of the crossbars is a 1 8 inch thick aluminum plate that I got from Clinton Aluminum, a local supplier. The underlying framework is one inch by half inch aluminum tubing and half inch square aluminum tubing that was brazed together to give support. The framework rests on the one inch angle iron that is welded around the perimeter of the inside of the trailer. To help keep the weather out, I used the 3M double-sided tape that is the strongest automotive tape that 3M makes all the way around the perimeter and then laid the plate down on top of it. Once the plate was in place, now what you're looking at is I drilled holes every three and a half inches all the way around so that I could rivet that plate to the underlying frame. Between the rivets and the 3M bond of the tape, there's nothing getting between the plate and that frame. Here's a good view of the underside of what it looks like now completely put together. With it flipped upside down and using the frame as a guide, was able to trim the plate so that it all fit flush. The next step was to attach handles so that I could pull this lid off. I attached six handles, drilled through, placed bolts in rather than screws so that it won't give it all as I pull that lid up out. It does fit very snugly. Now remember what I said about keeping honest people honest. What I did was installed four cam locks that are all key to life and they actually lock underneath the steel angle iron that the lid actually rests on that's welded inside of the trailer. Here you can see what the lock looks like. Nice clean installation. Here I am scuffing up the bright shiny aluminum lid so that I could get primer on it and ultimately get it coated with monster line. Moving on to the electrical stuff, you notice here the old 7-pin plug 
that was unsightly and had been broken off a couple of times, I decided to drill a hole and do a clean installation inside the rear bumper. Pardon the mess and the video orientation, but here's the seven pin plug, ran that neatly through the tongue. And then as we move back here to the box, you'll see I've added a couple of things there. I've actually added something else since, but inside here I've installed lights. I've got a Group 31 AGM Marine Deep Cycle Battery. There is a trickle charger, so the plug is what would be referred to as shore power and actually charge the battery if we've got electric. Also have the inverter here. Uh, it's got 2,000 watts starting power. Uh, will run basically anything that I would need it to run. Uh, on the side over here, I've got some switches that uh, can operate different things. Have chargers for USB and I've also added a cigarette uh, adapter since it's not all finished yet but it's certainly coming along nicely. I installed the diamond plate aluminum in here on spacers for a couple of different reasons. One, it acts as a heat sink and two, if I ever decide to change the inverter, I don't have to drill new holes in the lid of the tongue box. I used PET expandable braided sleeving on all the wires as well. I utilized submersible LED tail lights as well as light pods for the reverse lights. The other thing you notice is the custom fire ring that I had built. I had it designed to fit the spare tire and it's held on with a couple of custom brackets and turnbuckles. I put a section of rubber hose around it so that it doesn't rub off the powder coating. In part four, I'm going to do a complete video walk around of the trailer with the tent deployed so you can see how everything works. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found these videos helpful. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Leave a comment in the comment section below and I promise I'll get back to you just as quick as I can. Thanks again. And until next time, stay safe in your adventures.